you know, I just had an opportunity to uh, to, to interview uh, Coach Turner out there, at Gonzaga, and, uh, and and one of the things that he was talking about was the fact that, of course, uh, with the way that 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 rules are written, that the younger student athletes uh, have been able to play rec sports, have been able to play, but the older ones are the ones who have not been able to play. And he talked to the point that. The older ones are the ones that need it because the younger ones are, are oftentimes being guided by their parents. But he said that not playing is sending our kids directly out to the streets. You know, from where I think the leadership sits in the city, uh, they are tasked with keeping uh, the collective district residents as a whole safe. If you go back and you look at the mayor's order, it is clear uh, due to uh, uh, what they claim to be um, non-safety issues off the off the playing field after practice or before uh, a student athlete uh, gets to a organized event. It's very frustrating, um, not only for you know the student athlete, but for the coaches and administrators who uh, work with these student athletes. Um, you know, my biggest thing is. We want a conversation, like explain to us why that high school age kids are, are being left out of this. Um, if you look at middle schools, elementary schools, um, they're allowed to participate in their activities. Uh, the colleges in the District of Columbia are participating in their activities. Uh, adults uh, can go in and participate in activities. It's just something about 14, 18 year olds um, that they assume will cause more issues. It's frustrating. I know it's frustrating for those of us who work in it, and it's just been devastating uh, for our student athletes. And, and I don't think it's fair. And that's why I've been fighting the way I'm fighting to get those students back uh, on the court and field. Coach Hunter's been part of a, a, a group of uh, uh, that we have been talking and meeting on a regular basis. So we have. Uh, ready to roll out whenever uh, we get the signal, a, a guidance document uh, that lists all the mitigation and uh, safety protocols in it. And even Dr. Nesbitt, doing one of the press conferences, said that teenagers were more likely to follow the rules if supervised. To, just to that specific point, uh, Coach, I, I know that, uh, that, that that's one of the points that a very wise man has made a, a few times, which is that not having, I don't want to call them kids, not having the student athletes on the field doesn't mean that they're at home wearing masks, right? They're, right. they're, they're still out uh, with their, if that's what they were going to do, they're even more prone to be out with their peers uh, contributing uh, to, to any spread. I, I, I do want to play devil's advocate though. I have interviewed uh, two Doctors on this, uh, Dr. Vin Gupta of MSNBC, as well as uh, Dr. Sunil Boudrani, uh, who is the chief medical officer out at INOVA. Each of them have said, and this is not me taking a stance in the favor of student athletes not playing, but each of them have said that as student athletes get older to that high school age, that the potential of spread of transmission is higher with their, because they're damn near adults. So the, the potential of spread is higher with them than it is with younger, smaller children. I think we need to be clear here. Student athletes in the District of Columbia are engaging in high school age related activities right now. Maybe not within the district itself, but outside. I mean, they go across the bridge, the 14th Street Bridge, and they can participate. Yeah. Uh, they go up Rhode Island Avenue into Maryland, they can participate. The thing for me that is highlighted the most in this whole pandemic is the haves versus the have not. The socioeconomic divide is, that line now is bright. If you can't afford to pay, you can play. If you have recognizable talent, you get asked to go play, either on a basketball team, a seven on 17, maybe a football team you get recruited to go play. You can play volleyball, soccer. Today, out at the St. James, a lot of that's going on, right? Uh, but then you have a, a, a group of kids who, who can't afford it, frankly, or whose talent hasn't been noticed yet. 
And it's like you just said, the wise man said, those kids are not sitting home wearing masks. Uh, they're re-engaging with their peers. When their peers come back across the bridge or back down Rhode Island Avenue, they meet up, they engage in social activities, and it's frustrating. That is the most frustrating part. You look at, you can go to Maryland today and you can participate, but you have to wear a mask while you play. You can go to Virginia and play, but you don't have to wear a mask, but you have to wear a mask on the sideline. And then in the District of Columbia, there's no activity. Um, so it's frustrating. I think it, it's frustrating, not only for us, I'm sure it's frustrating for our, our leaders as well, as they all try to, to figure out, you know, what's best. I mean, honestly, nobody's been through a pandemic before. What effects do we believe that this has on the already damaged psyche, uh, student athletes who are already dealing with depression, already dealing with anxiety, what effect does it have to have them feel like, again, I'm not getting to do what other people get to do? People who what? may already feel that way, what effect does this have on them in that? I think, again, it's devastating, but the point, I wanna make a point, there is a perception that this, that only the private school and the parochial school kids are playing, and that is not true. There are people who live in the District of Columbia who have the financial means that send their kids to public schools and send their kids to public charter schools and private and parochial. Those people are then taking advantage of and sending their kids out and finding opportunities for their student athletes to play. There are a group of people across the city who maybe send their kids uh, to a parochial or a private school who work two or three jobs who can't afford uh, an AAU uh, league fee. So it cuts across, it's not, there was this belief that, oh, uh, our public school kids aren't getting to participate, so uh, let's stop everything for everybody. But it's not just the public school kids. There is enough wealth in the District of Columbia. It cuts across uh, all four of our sectors, parochial, private, public, and public charter. Uh, what you gotta really look at is, is again, it's the haves and the have nots. And what we forget is, or what we tend to forget is just what you said is the mental um, aspect that this is a uh, mental effect is gonna take on our kids. Uh, as far as, dude, if we don't get a spring sports season in, there will be high school students that will have lost half of their high school years to be eligible to participate. That's devastating for, for kids who are, who see athletics most of them in an urban area as a way out. It's devastating. There's there's a focus, uh, almost an unnecessary focus on the game itself, but not necessarily what the game provides. That is an escape. That is a, a way out for many people. That is an avenue to get to college or to obtain a scholarship, to even get recruited in the very least. Um, and I think a lot of that time with coaches, with administrators, with their brothers or sisters on their respective playing services on their teams uh that that time is just it's stripped and it's non-existent to a point coach to the point that Darrell is making there do you feel as though leadership as a whole understands everything that athletics provides for student athletes beyond just a game a, a lot of people not just student athletes but feel like the city leadership doesn't care about their needs and, and their well-being. Um, so when they see, um, you know, teams in Maryland or teams in, in VA playing sports and they keep being told that they're not allowed to do it, it's almost like, well, you just don't care about me. That's what I probably get the most um, from our kids is they don't care about us. Um, what athletics brings, it helps a kid develop a personality, uh, leadership skills confidence, um, team the ability to work on a team, all things that employers look for. Um, so um, it, it's been plenty of times where I've gone on an interview or, or something like that. And I always listed I was a former athlete on my resume. And the conversation always turns to athletics and the things that you learn while being an athlete. And we have a bunch of kids who are missing those lessons. Look, I, I want to add to that, you know, first of all, I think I want to commend our student athletes. I think they have been uh, phenomenal in the way they're raising their voice. I think they have uh, done it in a very civil manner and they are engaging and 
and you know participating in, in signing a petition that's gone around. I think Coach Hunter has had a petition that he's helped push out. I think he's gotten over like 1,600 uh, yeah. signatures on that. A lot of kids aren't out making bad decisions. Uh, so, you know, I just want to be upfront with that. But they are in the area where a lot of bad decisions are being made. Um, so they don't get the escape or they don't get the outlet or maybe they get caught up in something uh, because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time where, you know, typically practice is over at 7, 30, 8 o'clock. By the time you get home and do some homework, have dinner, uh, you know, you're probably not hanging out in in the streets to D.C. But now, you know, these kids, they don't have any outlets. So they may just be hanging out with their friends, you know, listening to music or, or shooting basketball on the, the playground court and something happens. Doesn't mean that the kid is engaged in something negative, but they don't have their normal outlets. So, you know, I, I this is a pandemic that no one's ever been through a pandemic. And I think collectively at the level way above at the 30,000 foot level where leadership is having to make decisions based on what is best and most safe for the district as a whole, that's what they're making their decisions on and i'm not privy to uh the the data or the the metrics that our department of health have and i have to trust that they are going to get us back uh, on the field when they feel it's safe with that being said my phone has not rang and it probably will after this but i have not been i have not been in had, had an influx of calls from parents i've had emails a few as of this last week since Virginia has gone back uh, to play and I certainly have gotten uh, more emails from parents you know asking to have the suspension lifted um, and I attribute this to the fact that I go back to this those who have a voice usually have the means and they have taken the means that they have and they have found other avenues for their kids to play there is a segment of our um, uh, population that doesn't have a voice and 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 they haven't found that voice yet chad you know this we've had march on virginia march on maryland that has not materialized here ricardo report bruh